So can you share just a little bit with us, Erica, about your career journey? What was your first job and, and where did that take you? Yeah, so I think when I um, was in university, probably just like a lot of students, I thought that I was going to start at one position. I was going to go straight to the CMO in five years. And I thought that it would be very linear and very direct. And what I found out is that my path and my career was anything but linear and anything but direct. But all of the stops that I've made along the way have very much prepared me to be where I am today. And each of my stops were very strategic and thought out. So um, I think one of the, the things that I did in undergrad was that I took a lot of internships and I interned at a variety of different companies so that I would have a well-rounded experience and knowledge even before I started full-time as to what do professionals actually do in different career paths, be it on the communication side, in PR or production, or you know, as a, a director or a writer, I wanted to experience a lot of different um, career paths. And so I did just that when I was at um, Michigan State University, interned a lot of different places. And my last place that I interned was at General Motors. I was part of, they had like an intern rotational program where you went into the internship program, you interned for a summer in marketing, and if everything well went well, you went back as a full-time hire um, as part of like a college graduate training type program. And so um, I did my internship my junior year at General Motors, and then I went back um, a year later once I graduated to work in Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. That was the first place I started. Um, and I started there in digital and social media marketing, partly because a lot of people at the company didn't know much about it. And it gave me an opportunity to come in to learn a, a new trend and a new skill set that um, was very attractive to the marketplace from a marketing and advertising perspective. But it gave me an opportunity to learn something that I, in which um, because I was very young and because I had the ability to kind of pivot and, and soak in a lot of information, provide a lot of value for the organization mm -hmm. in terms of setting up our social media channels, setting up social media plays. And this was back with, in 2008, right? You have to remember before, long before the world was what it was today, where social was a part of life. This is at the time where brands were just figuring out what does it mean to have a Facebook page or what does it mean at the time to have a Twitter account and how do you think about social media from an advertising perspective, not necessarily just um, as a as a brand, how do you put on and how do you show yourself well in these channels? Um, unfortunately, 2008 was the worst time to be in the automotive industry mm -hmm. because as we all know, that was the time where kind of the bottom was busted out of the, the industry for lack of a better term. Uh, GM was filing for bankruptcy shortly thereafter. I started at Chevrolet. And so all of the, the dreams and aspirations and ambitions that I had in terms of my job and my career path kind of went out the window because um, they were doing uh, corporate restructures, laying people off. Almost probably six months after I started, a lot of the, the craziness, I would say, started in terms of the uncertainty for the performance of the company. And so I was there about a little over a year um, almost a year and a half before um, my role was essentially eliminated as part of cor corporate restructuring and, and um, corporate downsizing. And so I can tell you as a you know very high performer, very high achiever throughout my career, this was the last thing that I thought that would happen to me super early on in my career after my first job was that I would be eliminated. You know, my position would be downsized. And so um, I decided to take a step, step back and figure out assess you know, what I had done, think about what I wanted to do next, and start to really take control of my career for myself. And so that was one of the moments for me where I realized that it was so important that I began to plot my own course and think about what did I want to do in my career for myself and not let an organization define who I was or how I kind of navigated my way through my career. And I'm so thankful that I learned it at 22 years old where I was super young because I think that skill set and that knowledge has served me so well throughout the rest of my career because I've always very, been very strategic about 
having a plan and deciding for myself what was important to me, what did I want to do next, and then figuring out how did I achieve that plan for action. And so I did just that. I sat down and I took a couple months off. I did a little bit of travel. I thought about, you know, the skills that I learned in social media. And I decided that that was really important for me to continue to hone in on that skill set because I knew that it would be something that other companies had in demand. And I knew it would be something that um, was going to serve me well to know how to think about social media from a brand and advertising perspective. And so I um, decided I want to move out of Michigan too. I lived in Michigan my entire life and I wanted to kind of branch out. And I thought that, you know, if now is not the best time, then there is no time to kind of take a leap of faith and figure out um, where I want to go next. And so I was open to both Atlanta and Chicago, probably were the my most, my two most like top cities that I want to go to next. Um, ended up moving to Chicago and starting to work at Sears, ironically, another company going through a lot of turmoil. But one of the reasons why I decided to work there was that um, they had an opportunity to still do digital and social media um, as part of my career. And I thought that, that was something, again, I, we talked about, you know, making sure that you're doing something that you're interested in. That was very interesting to me. And then I had the opportunity to report directly to uh, one of their CMOs. So the way that the company was structured was that each business unit had a, a chief marketing officer, and then there was a CMO for the comp- the entire company. And so I got to report directly to a, to a CMO of a business unit. And I thought, um, even though the company was going through crazy things, that this was an opportunity that I just couldn't pass up on to report to someone who was that high up in their career. And I can tell you that that was probably a great decision that I made because it gave me the insight to learn how to be more strategic, to learn what leaders think of um, at her level, and to have essentially a, a hat at just about every seat in between my chair and her chair, right? Because there was not a lot of the organization was kind of flat. There was not a lot of people between her and I because I reported to her. And even in her other business, uh, her other pieces of marketing, there wasn't a lot of directors and managers. And so it was easy for me to have that one-to-one communication where I got to see strategically, what type of conversations was she having in the C-suite? And how do you think about leadership? And how do you think about elevating the work that you're doing. So you're not just, I'm not just creating a social media post, but I'm creating a piece of content that lives indefinitely to attract consumers to my brand. And how does that make me want to show up in the world? And so um, that role was really good. At the same time, I decided to get my MBA. Um, And one of the reasons why I got my MBA, it was Again, I felt like that I was missing a piece of business knowledge, and I wanted to know that how could GM simultaneously be the number one automaker in the world and be filed for bankruptcy? And I said that there's something in between being number one in terms of sales and filing for bankruptcy that I'm missing because I wanted to have that linkage to know how exactly you get to be in these positions from a overall business standpoint, not just from a communications and marketing perspective, but the the uh, PL, the financial side of the business, so that I can completely understand how leadership makes decisions and how companies got to the position they were um, across industries. And so that was one of the main reasons why I decided to get an MBA. So I worked full time at Sears and I got my MBA at night. Um, I did that for two years. And then after I graduated with my MBA, I decided to go to a consumer packaged goods industry, which a lot of people go into CPG after you get an MBA. Um, A lot of people go into brand management. So I actually went in on the marketing side, not the brand management side, um, to think about media strategy and um, advertising strategy and how do you really get in, in depth and smart and taking a consumer persona and building content and advertising to reach the consumer based on this persona, based on the journey, based on all the knowledge and the data points that you have about who a consumer is and where are they intimately engaged 
in media and how can you use those platforms to actually advertise to them. So um, ConAgra was a great stepping stone in my career. It was kind of very much what I needed at, at the time to round out that social media experience that I already had. It gave me the ability to think very strategically to use a lot of that skill set that I built while getting my MBA, but taking it to my work um, and my career and figuring out how I could elevate a lot of the brands that I worked on. So we, um, I had a fantastic leader. I had a, a great boss at the time, but we got to work on a, a wide plethora of brands. So I worked on Slim Jim and Ready Whip and Healthy Choice and Banquet and a lot of brands who were doing well, but a lot of brands who also needed a lot of love from a marketing and consumer perspective. So it really taught you how to think no matter what seat at the table you had in terms of the position of your brand in the marketplace. Um, I also was able to think differently because at this time, this was the time in the industry around 2012, 2013, where companies were starting to think about advertising technology and how do you use programmatic and DSPs and data management platforms to get more strategic and granular about how you were speaking to consumers. So not no longer thinking about, you know, we're going to put a TV spot out on the Super Bowl or on a, a dedicated show Wednesday at 8 p.m. We're going to put this spot on it. Scandal, because I remember Scandal was really hot mm -hmm. at that time. And we're just going to put it on there and we're going to hope that people are tuned into Scandal, right? So people were moving away as advertisers from thinking about advertising in that way to thinking about, how do you actually find the people who are consuming different pizza pieces of digital and social media and then begin to target them as a, a human more one-to-one? -one? So if you know that I like fashion and sports, then you serve me up an ad that's relevant to fashion or sports in a place where I'm consuming one of those tele, uh, one of those channels. So the ad is contextually relevant and it's in a place where I'm already leaned in. And so at ConAgra, we began to think differently about um, about just the way that we were going to market. And I think that 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 served me so well at that time. And it was because I had a leader who was pushing and saying, you know, this is the next wave in the industry and you have to know what's going on. You have to always be, again, going back to my original point, taking your career in your hands and saying, here's the skills that I want to learn to begin to position myself for the future.